this is, I think, episode four or five of uh, my Rust podcast, and I'm really happy to be joined by Ivan today. We've had a lovely chat in the lead up to this. Um, I'm a big fan of what he and the team have been building at Shuttle, and I know those guys quite well. Um, met up a few times, so it's a pleasure to have you here today. Um, why don't you introduce yourself, give us a bit of a background on you, uh, and maybe a bit of the journey in the lead up to Rust, and, and I suppose why we're talking today. Sure, I'm happy to be here, Cedric. Thanks for the invite. Um, yeah, so I'm Ivan. Um, I'm a fellow from, well, I'm, I'm originally from Croatia, but I recently moved to Austria, so now I guess I'm an Austrian. Um, <laughs> So how I ended up here, you might ask, or where I ended up, I ended up at, at Shuttle, which is a Rust native cloud development platform that lets you deploy your Rust projects um, quite easily. And you know you can forget about managing your infrastructure by writing complex config files. You just add annotations in your code and then at compile time, you get what you need. But more on that later. Um, so so <laughs> how I ended up here is, is quite a journey. Um, I, I got into tech very young at around 16, 17 years. And when I was 16, 17 years old, I'm still in high school looking for a way to make some money. And that's when I started like building websites for local hairdressers and car mechanics. And cool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, which was like my first touch with entrepreneurship. Um, but that, um, that quickly turned into something else. And I, I come from a small touristic region. And, you know, you either worked in tourism or you didn't work pretty much. Um, and I did tourism. I didn't like it that much. So I went on Facebook and I was looking for people in my region who had developer written in, in their Facebook profiles. And I started yeah. reaching out to every one of them, telling them, hey, I want to be a developer. Can you find me a job? And one thing led to the other. I had a couple of um, interviews, but I ended up picking project management. So oh. my first, yeah. Um, my first touch with with um, a professional tech career was um, actually in project management, where as a youngling I worked with clients such as Procter and Gamble and, and GSK, and this was pretty much the burning phase where you're simply thrown into fire. Um, <laughs> you you you're burning for a year, two years, but um, in my opinion, you know, if you have the right mentorship while going through that fire, you really learn a lot in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Um, and then natural progression happened. I, I worked for a couple of agencies um, in, in project management, later product management, managing um, projects such as commercial mobile apps, websites, um, building um, white label solutions for certain clients, dashboards, universities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, that went on for about four years while still on the side doing some development. In the meantime, I switched over to mobile development and I did some freelancing in Flutter. Oh. Yeah. Still no rust there, as you might <laughs> Not yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, which got me then to the pre-phase to going into Rust, which was um, I was working in freelance as a project management, let's say, quote-unquote, consultant. Had okay. a couple of clients um let's say i enjoyed it um it was a good life um mm -hmm. but then i started feeling like I, I don't have like a physical touch with the stuff that i'm doing you know everything felt like artificial you're you're consulting someone for a product they're doing it's a question whether you like it whether you not like it whether it makes a difference you don't feel a sense of ownership around it so it really it feels kind of you know put a put a put a put a grayscale screen in front of it, and that's how you see it. Um, so I decided, you know, let's let's start doing again something on the side. Let's start having fun. And I, I think I accidentally stumbled upon Rust. And I thought, this looks interesting. Maybe maybe, maybe I can give it a go and see where it takes me. Like, what do I have to lose? <laughs> let's yeah, try sure. to remove that grayscale filter in front of my eyes. Um, I started learning it slowly, um, and and I found Shuttle by accident. I think I found it on Hacker News or somewhere. Sorry, what year was this? When did you first kind of start dabbling in Rust? Players? That was, I would say, a year and a half ago. So okay. So that would be 2022. Cool. Quite recently, then, really, yeah. in the grand scheme. Cool. Nice. It's really fresh. Yeah. As you can see, I love to burn, and burning <laughs> burning makes your time go faster. <laughs> 
Yeah, hundred percent. Best way to learn is to throw yourself in the deep end, a hundred percent, because uh, yeah. you you either sink or swim, right? Well, exactly. so you say burning, I say swimming. So same kind of thing. But okay, so that's pretty recent. So you threw yourself in. Sorry, you you mentioned a site or you mentioned a place where you found. You think? Yeah, I think Which? it was Hack Hacker News or or something. Okay. And you know, having web development experience from back in the days, I thought, okay, let's let's give it a go. Let's try to spin something up quickly. And then the question was like what's the easiest way to deploy it? Like, is there something like Vercel where I can just, you know, do a couple of little things and, and you know, boom, everything goes up. Um, and I found Shuttle, I gave it a go and I loved the experience that I had. You know, it didn't do anything complex. It was fairly simple things, but um, I thought, you know, it would be a good way to learn if I started, you know, contributing rather than just going through books, like again, throw myself into the water, as you would say. Yeah. Um, and that's when I, that was my first like touch with Shuttle where I reached out on, I joined their Discord, I sent out a couple of messages and I was like, hey guys, you know, I'm not experienced, um, but you know, I, 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 how do I put this? I understand the context. I know how things work, but I don't mm -hmm. understand Rust specifically. And but I really want to learn it. Um, and they were very helpful um, at that point. They they gave me some. You know, Shuttle was much smaller back then. I think we had like 500 members in the community. Now we are at around 4,000 maybe. Yeah, so it was wow. yeah. Well, we still keep the same level of approachability, um, like yeah. I had, <laughs> like I had back then, but. They were really helpful. I think it was Peter, um, who was Peter is our lead engineer, who you know guided me through everything. Told me, hey, these are some good first issues. Maybe try tackling them. And I started slowly contributing, wasting their time with reviews, and then telling me, no, this is wrong for the third time. Um, but one thing led to the other. I completed a couple of issues. I felt really good about myself because you know it, when you start researching Rust for the first time. You see a lot of comments of people saying, hey, start with something else. It might be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I did have background knowledge, but my like professional work, like a full time development job, you know, I never had that. So by default, I was way behind um, yeah. what, what some other experienced developers might have when, when they try to get into Rust. But yeah, the comments were try another language first. Rust is a bit difficult. It doesn't make sense to use Rust for this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the number one thing that everyone fires back at me is like the, the learning curve is too big, it's too steep. Most people who come from C or C++, C++ backgrounds kind of tend to find it easier. Those who have historically come from Java find it really difficult just because it's completely different. Um, which it, it makes me sad in some way, like I've equally been a part of that a couple of years back, definitely I can hold my hands up and say it is much more difficult, not based on personal experience because I'm not a developer myself, but yeah, from yeah. what I keep getting told from people of like, this has been the easiest path or this is the most, most natural path that I have seen. So it's great to see kind of you take your own initiative and actually as living proof as it can actually be done as long as you apply yourself. How, how did you find that, like applying yourself to that though? like? in conjunction to what we're saying here with oh you don't have the traditional background was it as difficult as people say or do you not have another experience to even relate it to i suppose and you're like well this is all i've ever known really other than the website development and the app development like i just threw myself in and this is great like what what's your counter i suppose to people saying like yeah you need to come from c or c plus plus to get this yeah, I think it's a it's a question that needs a bit of unwrapping because there are unwrapping. <laughs> yeah. um, th there's more more things to it. Um, one thing is what you said. So when someone comes from a blank, um, what's it called blank canvas slate. background? Yeah, or slate? Yeah, sure, yeah. clean slate. When you come from from a clean slate, you you know it, I, it could be a bit easier because you are, you know, not a lot of things make sense. So it's maybe a bit easier to ingest it when you don't have anything to compare it with. Yep. But then on the other hand, what I also felt being somewhere in the middle is that I felt like a lot of the things with which I've been banging my head with other languages were simply not the case with Rust. And as soon as I understood that, it was like, 
Okay, good. I like this. I don't want those like um, unexpected um, issues or errors popping up and being confused and then having to debug it, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a combination of those two things. But there's also a third thing, which is what I felt back then and then things started changing is the amount of beginner resources of learning resources that I'm that are made for beginners because back then or even even bit before it was very difficult to find something that isn't um, like a guy that tells you oh this is like this in C++ and then as a beginner you're standing there and it doesn't make sense to you sure. um, so there wasn't you know it, it felt like all the learning materials and documentation and everything else assume that you already know X and Y and Z. So that was a challenge. But I feel like over the course of the last year, um, together with the you know ecosystem efforts, community efforts, and even our efforts, everyone is really working hard on making Rust more approachable um, okay. to, to, to both beginners in the programming world, but also to people who are willing to migrate from other, uh, migrate, to move from, from other languages to Rust with having you know content made specifically for them. Hey, this is how you transition to Rust if you are a JavaScript developer or Python developer or whatever. So Which I is think, amazing. That's yeah, great to see yeah. because it, it bridges that gap of that we're talking about of like you must come from C or C++ or whatever to, to even get into this space is good to start seeing that that's more of a myth. And that's certainly something like I've tried to push in community pieces and in meetups and events. It's like, how do we help bridge that gap? But frankly, Usually it does sadly come from people in your position who are technically more sound and understand and, and can actually help teach that in the right kind of way, right? Like I can help from an employability standpoint and how do we get ourselves out there and maybe get noticed, but fundamentally you'll actually need to understand what you're developing and how. And I think that probably lies in your kind of hands as a champion of, of Rust and that how do we get there, right? So yep. that's great. And And where where do people or where would you recommend people go for said information like if if you're a javascript developer now or whatever node developer now or a golang developer now looking to get into it where is there a central point at the moment for this information or hey just go out there on reddit or find some some sort of community or discord channel that will get you in there like what's what would you say if anything yeah i would say um start googling um it's <laughs> do your it's, own work go find it yeah 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 it's a bit difficult because information is very scattered everywhere um in terms of actual resources if, if you're talking just from when you come to other um, from other languages um we are really trying to we as shuttle are really trying to you know put a lot of effort into producing either content or workshops um, like we did the rust for javascript developers workshop which is was a huge success we we really try to to make at least you know this this small thing that 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 can can you know it doesn't have to be a book of, of 500 pages just yeah. something that brings you closer to the language so that you understand it in your own language quote unquote um so we are trying to do it i know there's also someone and i forgot his name if he's listening um sorry um who's also working on a longer course also called rust for javascript developers okay um there's and if we're not talking to him about moving from another language, I think there's a lot of cool resources like um, Zero to Production by Luca Palmieri. We have Rust in Action by Tim McNamara. We have, you know, a lot of books and the, the Rust book, which is obviously recommended of everywhere course. You, you ask about it. And it's picking up pace. Like in, if, if you just follow along, the, for example, the This Week in Rust newsletter, um, every week you will find some interesting new resources. Like I've been following it for the last, I don't know, 100, well, maybe yeah. not 100, but many issues. There was always when something new came out, you could find it there and you could find the info you need. 100%. It, that's been my little kind of Bible, I suppose, for the last couple of years is keeping up to date and following along with that. And, and to see the of where that's even become, where we're at with that now is yeah. incredible versus previously there's more and more information getting put through better information yeah um obviously you guys at shuttle use stefan now stefan Baumgartner, right as, we as use your, him. <laughs> well you know what i mean like he's your he's your number one guy for the training stuff which is awesome i've, I've spoken to him uh, a few times hopefully stefan's listening but yeah lovely chap there so 
yeah again it's annoying because people ask for that information but actually it's not as difficult to find as you think there are plenty of resources out there that will help it and plenty of good resources that the stuff that people are actually using quite regularly is good and and recommended right yeah and i feel like you can easily go the wrong rabbit hole if you're looking for that info not not that specific info but but learning info quote unquote if you're looking for it on reddit or twitter for example i feel like it's very easy to follow i'm not gonna say who's wrong or who's not sure but but it's very easy to follow wrong rabbit holes you know from a quote-unquote psychological standpoint you know you you see the first comment referring to you shouldn't start with rust first or rust is difficult or this doesn't make sense to do it in rust because i did it in like half an hour with another language and and you know <laughs> creating conclusions and like pictures in your head from those specific individuals who seem the loudest is it can, can easily become a turnoff for for anything that that you want to give a go the metaphor for life really isn't it yeah, like yeah. make make your own assumptions don't listen to what you've been told by whoever so yeah. okay great all right well let's keep pushing people that way make sure you do your own researches and your own findings but there is plenty out there go to learn where's best best for you I, I suppose what's nice is obviously you mentioned your journey into into rust in general but also your journey into where you are now with shuttle and the work that you're doing and I think the number one, I suppose, piece of advice I've given over the last four years is if you are not in an environment where you can work with Rust, and this is the classic chicken and egg situation, right? I want to work with Rust. How do I get into it? Well, you need experience. Well, I can't get experience because I don't have a job in it. So I can't, you know, it's like, where do I start? The, the, the main piece of advice I've always given over the years, and that's because of the anecdotes of, for instance, someone like yourself is like, cool, we need to get involved with open source projects and you need to show to people that you are going above and beyond other than saying, yes, I'm interested. Yes, I want to learn and work with Rust because everyone everyone wants to do that, right? So what are you doing to go above and beyond? So that, that specific journey for you into making your way into Shuttle, which you summarized really nicely into two quick sentences actually probably was a bit tougher than that so what, what are your recommendations when it comes to people in what was your situation before in putting themselves out there and getting work or doing work that could eventually result in some work commercially in in rust what's your mm. advice yeah so to to talk about the, the chicken and egg i mean that's that's something that really has been happening for for a long time like um, no matter when you started especially in tech you know it's difficult to get experience because you cannot get a job it's difficult to get a job because you cannot get experience but i always say you can get experience like even even back back when i first started like eight years ago or something um when i wanted to be a, a front-end developer um I, I didn't have experience, no one would hire me, of course, but then I created my own experience. I would go to, I don't know, a business's website, um, I would try and make a redesign, um, develop it and, you know, tell them, hey, I did this, do you want it? No? Okay, boom, into my portfolio, I have something that I can show to my future employee, yeah. employer. Um, I guess the same thing is with, with with open source in one way or the other, because we we put a lot of effort into, since we are an open source product, we we, we wouldn't be where we are right now without contributors. Um, so would even expand not just the hiring bit, but also, you know, um, having contributors. We, we have this thing called a Shuttle Heroes program, where we award those who go above and beyond. And what does above and beyond mean is, is when you're a contributor, it doesn't have to be just, you know, doing PRs, opening up PRs, resolving issues. It can be writing about Shuttle, like a tutorial, a guide or something, spreading the word. Yes, making technical contributions, but also helping out in the community when someone is stuck. Like, you don't need to have, for example, the knowledge to, to I don't know, answer help threads on Discord. If you look at them for, for three days, just on and off, you can start noticing patterns. Um, for example, if someone has an issue with this, it, there's a chance it has been already resolved. You can jump in and say, hey, you know, I saw this happen. Um, this is the solution to it. Now, those are very small things. Yeah, yeah. But when you're a startup, especially in our case, you know, we, we are a small team. 
that one person who who just follows the help threads for half an hour a day and and just replies to those that are that um he, he knows how to reply to that saves us a lot of time but that that's like the the, the, the minor thing um in terms of contributing again the hero program so when we notice someone who's really you know going above and beyond and helping us out in all those directions we we enlist them into the heroes program which you know gives them swag of course um and insight into you know some new features um that we are planning um but we just build like this this small you know group of people who we bounce ideas yep. back and forth and so on is that a daily contribution thing? Is that a weekly, a monthly? Like how often would you sit there and contribute for, or is it like an ongoing thing of like as and when it creeps in? How how, how does that work? Yeah, so so it, um, with the contributions, it depends. It, it depends on how much free time people have. Um, you know, there's people working full-time jobs that do it for sake of love. There are people who are doing it just to learn and so on. I, I covered the part where I wanted to talk about Shuttle Heroes, because it's a program that really rewards anyone, no matter of their technical experience. Like if even if you're a beginner and you are you're not feeling confident to contribute to a complex product such as Shuttle, um, yeah. you can still contribute in other ways. And that can get you, if we're looking at employment in this case, that can maybe get you in a content writer position, for example. You know, it's it's not a Rust developer, but still you're working for a Rust product, for yeah. example. Yeah, it's getting your it's getting your foot in somewhere, right? I, I think uh, uh, from the conversations I've had over the years, it's people expect, oh, if I contribute in this way, I will definitely get a Rust job, which is the pipe dream a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously that's what we want, and that's the reason why you are doing it. But frankly, like you've got to take your moments where you can. I, I think one of my main questions then is, how do you go about choosing which project to work on is is it a matter of like oh this is cool i'm interested in it i'll give it a go is it this is where i see most potential in a job what would you recommend i think i know your answer to it it would probably be the one that you most enjoy or something that you're actually passionate about because especially if you're juggling a, a, a full-time job for instance or something somewhere else it's like you want to make that a passion project that then turns into something so it doesn't feel like a chore i imagine but like there are so many different projects you actually can go out there and contribute yeah. to. Which which ones should you choose, or is it? I don't know. What do you go before I say anything? Yeah. Um, well, you know, initially I was in a bit of a different situation because I I I, I had I had work and you know I I had a job and I had a source of income and everything, so it was much more easy going. I only had the the wish to switch, um, but yeah. no no need. Let's let's put it that way. Um, I would say I, I went by feeling, you know, I, I, I looked at how the docs look, how, what the product is, first of all, of course, what it does, whether it seems interesting to me. If it's interesting, then I, I gave it a go. Um, mm -hmm. I joined their community. I saw a lot of people there, you know, active, talking, um, very being very helpful to whoever comes. And, and that's what I needed. Like I needed this, this small community which will help me get through the challenges I'm anticipating, which I'll have during my learning journey. Yeah, good. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, and Sorry, and, and it was something yeah. I was familiar with in one way or the other. So I guess familiarity right. also helps there. Like if, if you are someone who who loves CLI um, and, you know, has your calendar in, 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 in your command line interface, if, if you have a music player in there and so on, you will probably maybe steer towards some of those um, projects because you know you you get something out of them as well sure 100 percent. and i'd agree with that from a, an employability standpoint at the moment it's less so i don't think you need specific domain knowledge in anything like this at the moment in where are we at now what month are we in september 2023 um it, it's less about the domain and it's more about what like from a technical perspective, you have helped build and, and the tools around it that you're comfortable with, right? So don't feel like you have to pigeon your, hold yourself down one particular thing, because again, you've been told or you've heard every job is in Web3 development, so I better get involved in that because that's what Rust do. No, you know, get go into something that you're comfortable with or want to see yourself working in in the future, and you, you're setting yourself up quite nicely, um, which is quite which is quite interesting. I suppose another question then on the like advocating for Rust um, and pushing that out there and getting that going. 
especially this year for me, you know, it's not been as booming of a job market. It's been a bit more stable and, and teams that are hiring are hiring maybe one or two people as opposed to five, 10, 15 and really scaling things up. Um, that was 21, 2022. That's kind of what was going on there. This year has been a lot more stable. So I focus a lot more on the community piece and engaging in meetups and, and working out in that standpoint, putting on some of these podcasts and hopefully engaging in some some pieces there. Um, Obviously, I'm trying to advocate for us and push that out as much as I physically can. And, and it's obviously it's it's in. It, it, I do it for a reason, obviously, it's the more rust work there is out there on a recruitment front, there's going to be more recruitment. And so, you know, in turn, that's you know why we kind of do a lot of this. I'm, I've also been involved for such a long time, four and a half years now, uh, when rust was a ghost town and dead and, and nothing was happening. So I've seen that transition to where we are now. And I really would love to see it push on through and, and get the recognition that it is getting, but from a much more commercial, widely spread kind of space, right? So that's why I'm doing all of this. But from your standpoint, who's doing well at it? And maybe what can we do more as a community from both people who are professionally working with Rust and, and have a big voice to maybe those who don't have a bigger voice? Like what, what would you like to see from a pushing Rust out there a little bit more? Big question, I know. <laughs> That's a very big question. <laughs> huh. Or are we doing the right things? Is it already happening in the right kind of way and we need to do more of it? I don't know. Yeah, it, it feels like it, it, it depends on, on which subset of the industry you're aiming at. Um, like if you look at, I don't know, you, we can see that, um, you know, um, um, there's a lot of, um, like like um, migrating over to to Rust for for like browser use cases, and um, in in the world of front end development, you know I, I won't even talk about front end development, but like in the world of back end development, it's still it's still you know a question when whether how should I use Rust when does it make sense how does it compare to this how does it compare to that and so on, and um, I guess I, I I'm una unable to answer your question in terms of you know what exactly needs to be done and how loud do we need to be and where do we need to be loud? I feel like, you know, with, with the meetups that are happening, um, with, with, with the content that is being produced, with looking at Hacker News, you know, I'll, I'll use Hacker News as an example, you know, I, I would say that every day there's at least one post related to Rust and in most cases it's, it's, it's of a positive kind of context yeah. like someone doing something in rust and it turned out much cooler or faster or something um but i feel like it, it's it's a long process and that it'll take time for it to slowly you know grow on people uh, as the industry changes which i think goes straight into into what might happen with rust in the upcoming years and and sure will it change will something change how will it change it's difficult to predict i mean and um, you know I feel like you know, this is again without any facts or anything. It's just a feeling <laughs> and a hope. Yes, please. That over time, as technology advances, some things that could have been tolerated three, four years ago are no longer tolerated today. And yeah. I feel like the baseline of what's tolerated, what's not, will move up a couple of Our standards will increase. Yeah, standards exactly. Will move. Yeah. Exactly. And this ties not just to, 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 to I don't know, code quality, to, to the way you write apps, et cetera, but it also ties in with, with you know, bigger companies and even agencies and their tax stacks, what makes sense from a monetary standpoint, from a team's standpoint, like what, what kind of themes does it make sense to hire? Um, should you start your next project with this language or that language? Again, it's just like estimates, but yeah. it, I feel like something will change that will get that letter to that level up and that what has been acceptable before will no longer be acceptable and that rust with its offering and, and the way you, you use it will be like a good i don't know good, good standard uh, yeah, yeah exactly yeah i understand I, I think i think you're not you're not wrong i, I wouldn't disagree with it obviously uh code quality and, and standards have always been a conversation um that i would say most tech teams will surely be talking about on a day-to-day -day and and almost yearly 
goal is like obviously we want to be better than where we were this time last yeah. year right like otherwise kind of what's what's the point you'd like to think although hey i'm sure you've been involved in conversations in the past and i'm sure i have been of like i don't care it just needs to go out right kind of kind of mantra um they tend to do it not do so well down the line obviously right but i i don't disagree with it i think rust obviously lends to that quite nicely it's always been that the big kind of conversation piece and and over the long haul rust definitely saves you money and and it's it's a conversation i'm waiting to set up um on another podcast soon uh with a a kind of c-level person whose role solely is looking at the costs of of how rust has, has changed their business they're not technical whatsoever but they, they can yeah. show the insight from a high level because i think for people trying to advocate and push rust into their own tech teams let's say you're in a java team and you're like well, actually i want to move things into rust and here are positives for why we should do it if it makes sense it doesn't always make sense for every team but in this case um this person can actually offer the final say on how it's saved on cost um which usually isn't an initial saving of cost because there's time and uh, rust is perceived to be difficult to learn and it's at the moment still in a place where it can be at times difficult to hire for depending on specifically what you look for but over the long haul personally like you say when it comes to standards and setting the tone rust so far and all the conversations i've had with people that i've worked with uh, has always been the right kind of choice for them technically there are hundreds of other decisions they could make in terms of what stack they use. But so far, I've only been involved in positive ones where it's been like it's made sense for us and we've we've bettered for it. So I hope to see some of these things change. And yeah, in the in the future, we do see a, a higher standard with Rust at its core. You know, why yeah. not? Yeah, I'd and be happy. <laughs> it'd be nice. Um, well, look, um, what I want to do is just wrap things up, if I can, with a couple yeah. of questions that I tend to ask everyone else, um, just because I'm, I'm intrigued. We, we've covered some of the bits, I suppose, so I don't need to cover all of it. Um, but from a learning thing and, and where people should head moving forward now, you've given some really good insights. Um, there's plenty of things that we can go on there um, for people to go on and, and learn and, and hopefully get involved in, in the community a bit more. Um, I suppose, like, if you were hypothetically you learn you've learned everything you've learned in rust right now let's say we were told right we have to scratch all that you have to start again from the beginning based on your experiences if you were to start learning rust again tomorrow what would you do differently or, or where would you start uh again now from zero development or with some background from some background in development getting the core principles of this is how we develop but in in terms of rust specifically based on what you've learned now and maybe you maybe you've gone down some tracks and you've gone what the heck did i do that for or yeah, whatever yeah. There's, there's slippery roads which you go down and and i know you usually are an advocate for jumping in and, and learning it for yourself 100 percent. but let's take that barrier away let's say you were in really simple terms what, what would you do differently or, or where, which road would you go down now right um so one thing that I would do differently would be that I would probably so if you say that I do have some some development experience behind me I'll give I you would, that. yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> I would probably utilize ChatGPT more in a way that he would be a sort of mentor quote unquote in a way that you know I would use my previous experience as a sort of hey this is what I know how does this compare to something else in, in Rust, for example, that would be maybe step two or step three. Um, but if I were to start, you know, from, from the first step, it would go something along the lines of if I want to get into, into backend development, saying mm -hmm. I have backend experience from before, I would do the book. I think the book is well written. Good. I would use ChatGPT with it because as good as it is, I feel like there's still some sections of it which might seem a bit too complicated for a beginner without too much context okay cool. understanding um um and um, understanding um, ownership borrowing and, and other it's and bits and rust i think that chat gpt would be helpful there um, in terms of explaining to me like if i was five years old or something yeah i love doing that day to day now anyway yeah there's a lot yeah. of things i do like obviously from a recruitment perspective where it doesn't make sense so yeah. hey that's fine cool yeah. i would go through the book and i would already slowly start fiddling things on my own um, mm -hmm. and and just trying to 
do some basic things. Um, you can even ask ChatGPT to give you a couple of basic things, basic projects. Um, you know, try to spin up a server, try to create a create, create read, update, delete app or something. And anytime yeah. I would get stuck, I would, you know, utilize Google and, and try to figure things out on my own. Um, but this is a very wild approach where you're throwing yourself into it. And it's very easy to, to lose motivation if you don't get it right for the first, second, third, fourth or fifth time. But if I can yeah. say anything here is is like, yeah, you need to get used to it in one way or the other. No matter yeah. if you have one year of experience or 15 years of experience, you will still find yourself, um, you know, Googling, going down rabbit holes, trying to figure something out. And then, you know, 3 a.m. Yeah. in the shower, you you get to the solution. I think that's just part of the job. And, and you should constantly keep in your mind to not get demotivated by the fact that some things don't click immediately. Gotcha. How would you think so on that point? Because one thing I discussed with, uh, I can't remember who it was now, but I discussed with someone recently it was around. So obviously, in a normal interview process, for instance, there's nine times out of 10, some sort of take home assignment or some sort of technical test for you to work on. How would you feel about there uh, from a recruitment perspective? So from my side, maybe asking the teams if we're happy to send them out just for fun almost. And, and not from a recruitment perspective and having you work a project so that you've got an end goal. Would, would that be helpful, do you think, from a learning perspective if I sent tests out to people to be like, hey, just give this a go and have fun or not? I feel like the, the important thing here is the actual review rather than solving the task. When when someone, you know, if, if that recruiter has someone technical or if that recruiter is technical, I feel like there's a lot of value if someone feels somewhat confident, but then they fail the the assignment yeah but then they get a review with you know bullets and then arrows telling them you know okay why that's how. good to know. Yeah. okay i asked that because that's something that i want to work on right from a training perspective more often than not and i agree with you throwing yourself in the deep end and getting cracking on it is is important and you've got to get familiar with what you're coding and writing but you're 100 percent right and it's not really something I thought of, which was yeah, quite maybe. stupid to me, but you need like some sort of mentor or some pool of people that can actually go through that and say, this is where it's good and this is where it's crap, which yeah. is what obviously helped you with Shuttle initially, right? Is you were getting some feedback as to like, this is where it's going well. Yeah, maybe maybe a small disclaimer because I mentioned ChatGPT. Don't use it as a tool to, to code <laughs> instead of you. Use it to make things make more sense in a way that things that are not comprehensible to you at first, ask ChatGPT to put it in different words. Yeah. Ask it for examples, learn that way. Don't don't get it to code for you. You you probably won't get too far. And especially because Rust is relatively new. And then there's the cutoff date for GPT. Um, yeah. you'll just confuse yourself and Yeah, a hundred percent. hundred percent. Hopefully people know that, which is fine. Um and then I suppose my, my final sort of other final question, obviously we've had a great chat about advocacy in, in Rust and, and and where that's going. We've, we've spoken a lot about open source development, Shuttle, your experiences, learnings, which has been really fascinating. I, I really think people are going to seriously find this um, enlightening. Back to, to the open source stuff, is other than what you have been doing with Shuttle, is, is there anything you've been keeping your eye out on in terms of like progressive projects that you've seen that are quite interesting and, and cool that you might want to mention or give a shout out to? Pooh, I would say Quadrant. Um, I really love yep. what they are doing. Um, so big, big, big props to them. Um, Very well known. For, for, for context, yeah, them, like vector databases. Um, very important in today's, um, especially AI day and age. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah, you caught me off. Um, you caught me by surprise. Well, what, what we'll do is we'll take that offline, and if you do think of any, yeah, it might yeah, not be, and it's fine, that. you know, then you can ping me a message and I'll add them in there as like a little shout out. But um, I, I don't know. I just thought we'd give some some people a chance to have a look at some some cool stuff that's going on in the space. But Quadrant, okay, have a look at that. Well, I'll, I'll add a link in, in the in the descriptions for those things. Um, well, other than that, I'm, I'm happy, unless you've got some questions for me that you want to cover up with me. I think I'm good. I, I, good. I asked a lot of questions before the interview. Before the <laughs> here podcast. we are. <laughs> Well, look, I appreciate you uh, and your time and, and the work that you've been doing. If people are interested in, in the work that you've been doing, um, they can head on over to the, the shuttle stuff and, and have a look for themselves. 
I'll put a link in the description. Hopefully you don't mind people reaching out to you equally Always around not. getting some support. Great. Um, let's help each other out, which fundamentally has always been what's good about the Rust community is, is genuinely there has been some good uh, kind of shared knowledge and, and, and caring for each other, which I've loved. Um, and but other than if, that, and if anyone is going to Eurorust, you can me or us um, to Eurorust. So definitely stop by. 100% in uh, Brussels, um, which is happening October, right? October? October. Yeah, I think it's the 12th. Yeah, 12th and 13th. Yeah. Cool. 100%. Go say hi to, to the team there. There's going to be quite a few in attendance, I believe. So um, it should be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, thanks so, so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, all the best, but um, yeah, see you later. Cheers.